Hello, beautiful human. Thanks for clicking on our conversation with Chris Martin of Coldplay. We have a lot to discuss. New album, new song, higher power. If you haven't heard it, link in the description below while you're down there. Please leave your honest feedback on this conversation in the comment section. Hit like on this video. And please, please, please subscribe. And today's conversation is sponsored by Total Wireless. Do amazing. Let's do this. Hello, beautiful human. My name is Zach. That is Dan. And uh, yeah, we welcome Chris Martin. Woo! Woo! Hi, Zach. Hi, Dan. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to see you both. It is uh, really genuinely such a pleasure. And it's really, really awesome to talk to you, especially as you introduce a new era that is uh, literally out of this world. It's hovering on a different frequency. Um, does space interest you? How does this era begin? Well, that's a wonderful, huge question, Zach. Um, I think the main thing that, uh, I'll tell you how, exactly how this all began. One time I was watching Star Wars and they had the scene in the, with the I haven't told anyone this, the scene with the cantina band, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I wonder what musicians are like in, across the universe. And that led to this whole thing. And now here we are. And so, what that led to us doing was just imagining this whole other place called the spheres, which is a, a group of planets. It's like a, a solar system with lots of different places and creatures and stuff. And what I found is that when you have imagined a place like that, you can sort of become any artist within that. It's a very freeing thing to take yourself out of being Coldplay and just think, okay, well, I'm, I'm not even a human. What does music sound like? And, and then strangely enough, there's a real freedom to then really say what you think about life on earth when it's sort of set in a metaphorical place, how you might feel about certain regimes or certain rules or certain emotions. It's much easier to say it in those places. Because you're literally on the outside looking in, like you've removed yourself to the furthest distance. Yeah, for example, you know, I might feel a strong way about the treatment of a certain group of people on earth. But if I said that too literally, all it does is just add to the noise, you know, and doesn't really get, get you anywhere. But we can sort of espouse the values that we have by setting it with aliens and us and saying that we, we love all aliens. You know what I mean? Yeah. Why did we need Max Martin to help share this message? Well, that is a wonderfully great question. Max, Max Martin to us is like um, sort of the, the, the last scene of the movie where... where someone comes to rescue you and make everything okay. And I feel that, you know, we, I don't know, well, I do know how many more albums we have as a band, which is it's not that many, you know, before we're gonna stop making albums, I think. But um, in, this, in this period, it just feels like Max has been sent from God to, or sent from the universe to uh, just, just make us better. That's what it feels like. <laughs> He's so fun to work with. He, he just allows us. To, he's so good at what he does. It's just a joy to work with him. If you take him an idea, he helps it get better. I just trust him so much on the Sonics. He has great people around him. He's so humble. I could speak to you for hours about how much I feel that he has taken our band from a chrysalis to the, the next stage. And that gives me goosebumps because the truth is like, He's had that ability for quite some time, but you've had this incredible musical ability for quite some time as well. There is, I think there's something about the wisdom that backs the making of this music and where you, like, you guys are qualified to leave Earth and look down upon it and then make music from this, literally, this out-of-worldly position, you know? Like, it's, I, 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 I feel like I'm describing it wrong, but there, there's... Uh, th I would trust the I would trust the two of you to become aliens because you know Earth so well at this point, and you've really the two of you combined have captured more emotions than people have a lifetime to live. You know? Well, I think it's very humbling for us to work with Max because he's like a thousand times more successful. So any any ego has to be really checked at the door because we, I know we've worked with some amazing producers over the years, but we've never worked with someone who we're like, okay. So would you like us to polish your Grammys this morning before we start? You know what I mean? He's, he's that much, you know, more 
So, so we, you so no, right? Like if you just saw him on the street, you'd have no idea. No, he does everything he can to keep himself anonymous, and um, that's because he's so handsome that if you saw him in real life, you would pass out before you had time to listen to the song. Well, what is the process like? Do you come to him with with like a shell of something, or how far along are you in the process, or is it different for every record? Well, th these are great questions, by the way, man, and um, <clears throat> and Dan, I'm sorry, we're we're, we're you're in our hearts. Hey, don't worry about it. I'll chime in at the end. Um, so how it works with, you know, Max is an incredible songwriter. So, so I said to him, like, we, we said to him, would you, would you like to come and produce us? Because we'd really like to get better and sort of start fresh. And he said, yes, I'd like to do that. I've never done that before in this way. And he said, I'd like you to audition songs for me, basically. I'll come and just this is just with me and we'll spend a couple of days just show me the ideas and will you let me change things if i want to change them and i said yes so 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 we so i do present him skeletons of things but knowing that he's allowed to change anything or suggest anything so so it's become very um it's become very sort of master student ish in terms of i, I really trust his opinion even yesterday or two days ago i played him something new and he said no this line's too busy change maybe change this to that so it's it's really like an apprenticeship for me in a really good way what like one of my questions was what have you learned what have you learned from the creation of this album and you say it was like starting fresh it, you at this point in your career you want that right because starting fresh is kind of like a new challenge yes well we're very old so it's it's lovely to feel um that energy so what what he what he's brought to us and and we've we had this with some other people but because I don't want to, we've really been lucky with the people we've worked with. I think that Max, you know, because we, we really don't believe in the tribalism of music or indeed of people. We, we really believe in that it's, all music is cool and all people are cool. And Max has that similar um, feeling of if something sounds good, it doesn't matter what category it's in or who sang it or what they look like. Or, so I think that we really share that just love of music. It, it doesn't matter who it's by. And um, he really has helped deepen that with the rest of the band, I think, with Johnny and Guy and Will, because he's, he's given them the confidence to be able to do a track that might sound a bit poppier or a bit this, because it's just coming from an authentic place. It's, he's making us realize that music can be authentic, even if it's not four guys in a band just playing guitars. Do you know what I mean? And by the way, like I think that's really important for a lot of musicians to hear who feel like they're, they, they maybe want to try new things but at the same time like are afraid to lose what they had before you know like you could you you, you could keep who you are as an artist while still having catchy my feeling on that zach is that you can feel in your body this is this applies to life i think not just singing if you if you take time to close your eyes or just be quiet for a second you can feel what's real for you and if that's real for you then it's authentic and then in the case of music that's whatever that is. If it feels good, it doesn't matter what synths are on it or what dance moves. It's real for you. So that's the only rule. At, at what point do you realize that rule? Uh, I think gradually. I, I, I realized it, I think, uh, initially in about 2005 when I didn't listen to that voice for a while. I was listening to other things like commercial considerations or pressure from certain people in suits and stuff and I, and I lost that voice for a minute and but it's a constant I'm trying to keep up with it all the time and get better at doing that I'm sure you have the same thing when you're doing your show you know like some things don't feel right but you're told that you should do this you should do that and as you go on you're like you know what it doesn't feel right I'm not going to do it and vice versa a hundred percent and but you know it's scary sometimes to trust yourself fully and to kind of almost like it's weird. My therapist brought up this phrase the other day was, you know, subconscious competence. You know, you kind of you, you know, without knowing the right things to do because it's it's ingrained in you. Right? Well, you're clearly, for example, you're clearly doing what you're on earth to do. Right. You've been doing it since you were so young. It's so in your it's your whole being. Yeah. So so somewhere in there, there's a guide inside you like that. You just have to listen to. I'm not saying I'm not. This is not a, this is not an excuse to be a, a ty tyrannical monster. It's just 
Like there is a there is a thing inside you like that that's guiding you where you're supposed to go. I th I think. Yeah, and you, it, but but it's it's trusting that, and and you can lose that. You can have it at one point. You can lose connection with that, and it's regaining it and keeping it consistent. And yeah, man. Like you know, if we the, one of the reasons I don't look very much on. I love looking at Instagram and TikTok of other things, but I don't. I try to stay away from specific feedback about what we're doing or number of likes and everything because that is an addiction that can pull you away from doing what you're supposed to be doing. A distraction on another level that could seep into every aspect of life. Um, who's the other set of vocals on Higher Power? Because her voice just hits different. Oh, well, that's a great question, man. That is a singer called Denise Carite, who is part of a group called the Four Love Choir. They did a lot of stuff with us on our last album called Everyday Life which we did not speak to you about because we didn't talk to anyone about it. And it was not very, it was very underground, but it was really what we, what we needed to do. And um, we met them and just really clicked. And uh, I love singing with her and, and, and there's three others in the choir too. And, and they're on higher power. They're on, a, they're on a few things actually. Do you write a record like that after coming in contact with somebody who's clear, clearly on a different frequency or do you write it aspiring to meet somebody on a di different frequency? I think probably, well, first of all, man, if because uh, I love you and I respect you, I, I, don't, I don't really believe that you write songs. I, I think you can write songs, but good songs, you just receive them, right? Yes. So, so when did but, th but that's like one in every 50. You know, we've, we've maybe had 10 songs like that in 20 years that just land from the sky. And are they the biggest hits? They're always, yeah. <laughs> so there's nothing to do with you. Or, or no, without, without question. And um, so when, when a song arrives, it, it sort of tells you, I, I need this, or I need that, or we had a song called Viva La Vida. It said, I, I need a big church bell. And we were like, we, we can't have a song with just a big church bell for the drums. No, it's ridiculous. It's like, well, that's what, that, the song was like, that's what I need. They're very, they're very deaverish songs. And so with Higher Power, for example, and, and a lot of our recent stuff, it's like, I need, I need a female, some female energy too. Do you, so do you enter a state? Does it give you warning that it's coming? Do you have to, like, how does, what, like, how do you get ready to even create something? I think that you have to be constantly open mind, open looking. It's like being, like being a surfer, you know, you can't catch a wave unless you're in the water. So I'm, I'm always on the lookout for a title idea or a new chord or a sound that I've never heard before. And those are like little portals through which a song might come. When it comes, do you have to go in, do you have to receive and just immediately dive in? Yeah, immediately, yeah. You, you can't like hold it and then like get to it? I can put it, I'll put it on my phone for a minute. But if it's really good, I'm like, I've got, we've got to get this going now. Get it out, yeah. Wow. Are we going too deep, man? I've, no, I this love is this. Too this hippie? This is, this is everything that I could ask for and a million times more because the truth is I do believe that, like, uh, first of all, Viva La Vida changed my life and the lives of millions of others, and it's a song, like many of your songs, dude, fix you. I mean, there's so many songs that will live on. I mean... Hundreds of years, they'll be listening to them on other planets. They'll listen to higher power 150 <laughs> years from now if there's still a civilization. I really do believe that with every fiber that I got. So to know that there is something bigger at play here is really, I mean, it's kind of cool and refreshing because, like, really, like, these songs shaped my life, but the lives of so many people that I know because music and art it has everlasting power. Would you like me to tell you my theory about this? Yeah, please. Which sounds a bit like mansplaining, which makes me think of a funny joke we made up the other day, which is, you know what mansplaining is, right? <laughs> anyway, I don't want to be man... I'm trying... Oh, this is not mansplaining, right? My feeling that why humans... Why we love songs is because they are a manageable amount of the magic of the universe, right? The, the universe is one big vibration. Every, every part of you, every part of Dan is molecules vibrating, right? Everything has a frequency. This is not nonsense. This is no, science. proven science. And that applies to the whole universe. Yeah. But that's too much for us to think about all day. 
And so I feel like we love songs because they're just little drops of that ocean of unknowable wonder. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but through that little drop, you, you get to know just a little bit more. You know? Yeah, because yeah. I always wonder, like, why does this piece of music, whatever it might be, let's say, uh, Blinding Lights by week the weekend, why does this make me feel so alive and like, like bigger than, you know what I mean? Like I'm connected to everyone and everything. And I, my, my feeling is that's because it's a, like a little universe vibration. Anyway, that I'm going way off, off topic. Not really off topic, but I'm going a bit too. When you, when you're creating, do you, you have to keep that in mind, right? So are, are all the songs on an album given to you or are some songs forced? Not, nothing is forced, but some songs require a bit more assembly. And th those, tend to, those, those are ones that you might, they might end up being a bit more interesting, but they might not connect with people. You mean interesting? Does that makes like, sense? Yeah, like, but, but do you mean interesting like production-wise, or do you mean... I'd say that we, we, have, we have some songs that I just feel landed, almost fully formed. And then we have another group underneath that that landed like half formed, and then you have to, you know, screwdriver and and they're 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 like they're the good songs and then underneath that are the songs that don't make it onto albums and there's thousands of them <laughs> and, and they sit on a hard drive somewhere they just they just sort of that's just like a it's like the riverbank where you're you're i can't quite explain how do i explain this that's like your junkyard yeah. that proves you're a mechanic but none of that stuff is going to be a great race car would you ever go back for inspiration yeah, always, always, yeah. I, I'm so, this, this, is, this is like a nine-hour interview for like specialist people. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I love this. Is Let's talk way, that, about my favorite hot sauce or something. <laughs> Daniel, what are you thinking? Well, I guess this one's a little... Uh, people enjoy this. Chris, if, you, if Coldplay had the opportunity to be the first band to play like at the space station or on the moon or maybe even Mars, would you guys take that opportunity? Well, that's a really good question, man. Would you? Would you go up there? One thousand percent. That's a lot of percent. I know, I know. I, hey, I, I think it's a risk I'd be willing to take. Not many people have done it. No, that's true. I think, um, isn't there an issue though if you played on the moon that you, no one can actually hear? I, I'm confused about the atmosphere. Hey, we'll have Elon, Elon will figure it all out for you. Elon, yeah, he probably will. Um, yes, I think, I think if, um, yeah, why not? Of course. We try anything twice. <laughs> I appreciate you beyond, Chris Martin. Thank you for taking the time and energy today to talk to us. And I hope you know that that's what our show is. It's about music and people watch it to learn and, and to, you know, really, so many artists really wildly, big and small, learn from this stuff and they're going to watch this and really pick stuff up. So you can never go too deep here and never be too detailed. And I really genuinely, genuinely appreciate it. Yeah, well, I don't, I don't mind, you know, I don't mind any ridicule because I'm only speaking what really is, feels true to me. Isn't that what we all have to do? And yeah, yeah, have. I think that's what we all have to do. And, and, Dan, and, let's talk more next time, okay, man? I sure hope so. I sure, I'm I, sorry. I got you know, we had a whole like lovers reunion thing. I'll save, I'll save all the good ones for next time when you're, we're here in person. Okay, guys. Hey, what a treat to speak to you. I could keep talking all day, but I guess I've got to do something else. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting the messages in the bottom screen. They're yell not yelling at me, but uh, they're giving me the heads up. I really appreciate you. I hope I'll see you in person before too long. All right, guys. Please, peace and love. You too. Thank you. Hey, beautiful human. Thanks for watching our full interview, but I get it. Like, a full interview is a lot. So we got a clips channel. We don't expect you to watch the full thing anymore, so we just gave you the highlights. Please, subscribe, and uh, notifications, and all that stuff. Okay, cool. I love you.